Okay, so this is part two of the IB Abnormal Psychology Study Guide video, uh, where we left off, we were talking about cultural impact. And something that I forgot to mention that was brought up to me was the, in the cultural impact, when you're talking about diagnostic criteria, uh, you, you see the diagnostic criteria that we have first is A to E, but that's using the book DSM. IBR, IBTR, but then if your question asks you to compare diagnostic criteria or anything at all, you could also feel free to mention the different diagnostic criteria books, such as the CCMD, which is usually used in Eastern cultures or tends to be used also in collectivistic cultures as compared to the DSM, which is used in the United States and tends to concentrate more on the emotional um, aspect than the physical appearance, which is what the CCMD tends to concentrate. But now going on to etiologies, we have two, three separate etiologies. And so you want to talk, talk about all three if your question asks you to compare etiologies. And so remember that this is for major depressive disorder. Our first etiology that we want to do is biology. And you don't have to follow this order, but it's biology, cognitive, and social culture. And what we like, what I like to do is, so as you can see, the bold letters here are studies, because you need at least a minimum, or what well, you need, uh, you need to include studies. That's something you need to include in your paper. So our first study is Hagen et al. And so biological, you can memorize Hagen. Or you could, if you can't remember the name at the, when you're writing it, just remember. So it's an evolutionary perspective on M major depressive disorder. So it is suggested that MD was a psychological adaptation favored by natural selection and served as two main purposes, to signal need and to elicit help from others in the social group. And so basically what the study concentrated, it was a Swedish twin study. And so when you talk about a study, regardless of what paper you are, paper one, paper two, paper three, always m remember to evaluate the type of studies you're using. So it was a twin study. And so that tends to help our not only the genetic part, the genetic influences, but the reliability. And because they had over 42,000 participants. And if you go all over the IB biology book, and this is one of the small studies that has a high number of participants. So always remember that a lot of participants, uh, depending on the type of study, can increase the reliability and trustworthiness of the study. So they use telephone interviews to diagnose depression. So telephone interviews themselves have a few flaws and few uh, pros, and then telephone interviews, and that tends to eliminate the connection between verbal language and nonverbal language. So you could also mention that. But then the rates were low and showed that even though there was a strong genetic component, results weren't as high. And so what etiology, the biological etiology is telling us here, is that there's not really a big, big, um, high component of results of major depressive disorder. Because it is also thought, it was also thought that the, five, that the gene 5-HTT affects transmission and reuptake of serotonin. Their hormone, uh, serotonin tends to influence our mood, which is low serotonin tends to lead to depression. So the hormone cortisol, which is what causes stress, uh, increases our stress, is also seen to influence the amount of stress in the body. So basically what I want you to take out of the biology is that Hagen, and does this twin study over 42,000 participants. But it says that there's not a high strong genetic component. There's a strong genetic component, but it's not as high as expected. And so also serotonin and uh, stress uh, and cortisol are two hormones that could affect your body. And if you go back to your paper one, you could also study that serotonin and, heart and cortisol are two hormones of the body. And so if you were to get a question in paper one that is asked to compare the effects hormones have, then you could use this serotonin and, and cortisol. That way it saves you time to um, material to study. And you can also replicate the things you learn. The cognitive uh, perspective or etiology it's that certain characteristics that make an individual more vulnerable are the ones that might cause the individual more likely to become depressed. So this is what's going on in our brains. What are we learning? And so people who have certain characteristics are more likely to become depressed. And this is explored by Aaron Beck. 
1976, which suggests that a cognitive triad is placed for depressed individuals. This includes a cluster of negative thoughts grouped into three categories. So usually a person who's experiencing major depressive disorder tends to have three types of thought, the self, the world, and the future. Those are the three categories. This generates thorough overgeneralization, selective abstraction, and polar reasoning. And so all these three, ty three types of categories can combine to create a negative schema. Depressed people have negative thinking styles, which is also explored by Robinson Block in 1989. So both uh, psychologists tend to explore what's going on in a person who's experiencing major depressive disorder and why is it that they have. So what's going on in our brains? And so usually a person experiencing major depressive disorder tends to have negative thoughts about themselves, about the world and about the future through different ways. So overgeneralization, selective abstraction and polar reasoning, which are books, uh, topics that you can also explore in the book. And then lastly, the social uh, etiology, which is explored by Brown and Harris, uh, who provide a vulnerability model based on interaction of vulnerability factors and provoking Asians. This including losing one's mother at an early age, lack of collagen relationships, more than three young children, and unemployment. So those are four things you want to remember. And because the social part is saying that what's going on around in our world that is making us depressed or what is it that is contributing to the major depressive disorder. And usually when you look at the statistics, a mother uh, losing months, mom at an early age, the more than three young children in unemployment, you tend to correlate the thing. If you have an appointment and you have more children, then you're trying to realize where am I going to feed these kids, where am I going to feed my kids and all this. And so that what tends to contribute to the major depressive disorder. And so when you, if you get a question that asks you to compare and contrast the etiologies, don't forget to mention the biological, the cognitive, and the social culture. And that basically summarizes the second part of this video, or part two of this section. And then our part three will conclude with our treatments, which are biomed, individual, and group. Thank you.